Hey, Danny here from One Minute Podcast Tips and Be A Better Podcaster. One of the questions that I see asked online quite a bit is whether you need a podcast website for your show. After all, most people generally listen on podcast apps like Apple, Spotify, Pocket Cast, etc. So if that's a preferred listening destination, do you really need a podcast website? For me, the answer is a simple yes. And here's why. While using a podcast app obviously makes it a lot simpler to listen to podcasts on the go, there is the danger of podcast apps disappearing. Stitcher was one of the most popular, but as you can see, the Stitcher app and web listing app are no longer available, and that closed down towards the end of 2023. Another popular podcast app is Castro. However, that's been going through some issues recently, where the podcast app and the website have been down twice or experienced issues in the last month alone. And this has led users to question whether the app's got a future. So if your listeners are on a podcast app and that disappears, it also means you've got to try transfer them to a different app, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. This is just one of the many reasons that I do recommend that every podcaster uses their own website. Now, this can be the free website that comes with your podcast host or a self-hosted platform like WordPress, Wix, Weebly, etc. Now, using a podcast website does come with some benefits as well. You can offer some more features on it, whether that's more listing options for your podcast, a newsletter, a membership or a tips program, etc. You have the ability to do that on your podcast website. For the One Minute Podcast Tips show, I use the free site option that comes with Captivate, and that still gives you some nice customization options to really make the site your own. So for example, I have a trailer pinned in the header, which makes it really easy for people to listen to the trailer and get a feel for the show and whether they want to listen to it or not. It also makes it super easy to listen to episodes, follow on your favourite podcast app, share your bio, have a dedicated call to action. So for, in for instance, I've got a sticky bar promoting my Magic Mike membership option, and you can also share social proof. So on my homepage, I share the rankings on good pods. I also make it super easy if you actually want to support with a tips, and I highlight the latest donors on the website. I can also obviously jump through right to the episode where it's got my show notes and the transcript underneath the show notes. If you're on a self-hosted website, then obviously that offers you more features. Now this is a show that I used to run uh, back in 2022, I think. And you can see here, I've got more options in the navigation. I also have more customization options when it comes to the design. So here, for example, I can have the, the latest free episodes, where to listen, you can put the latest reviews, for example, the latest blog articles, newsletter, how to follow. However, it's when you get up to the navigation that having your self-hosted website really comes into play. So I've got my about page, obviously tells you about me and why you should listen to the show. I've got appearances where I appeared on other podcasts and I've embedded these episodes, for example. I can split the episodes into seasons. I can make it really simple for you to understand how to listen to podcaster stories. So obviously you've got Apple, Spotify, iHeart. I've got the playlist player. And then you've got some links there to that assess feed in other areas. I can add reviews, which is a great way to show potential listeners why they should listen to your podcast. I can tell people how to leave a review because sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do is to leave a review for a podcast. So basically I break down how to leave a review on Apple Podcasts and I have the Apple Podcast player embedded there as well as how to review the show on Podchaser, which is like the IMDB of podcasting. And again, I've got a screenshot here of the show listing on Podcaster Stories with reviews, etc. I've also got a newsletter, my articles, so a blog post basically, and then sponsorships. So if you're looking to attract and work with sponsors, you can direct them to your sponsorship page. And this is where you can tell them what ad slots you've got available, how much they are for the ad slots, and give some audience and tracking details about your podcast. So it makes it really easy for sponsors to look at the show and the details and the stats, and whether they want to work with you or not. So as you can see, there's a lot of options available to you when you have a podcast website. However, for me, the biggest bonus is if a podcast app does go away like Stitcher did and Castro might, along with Google Podcasts, which is closing down later this year, you don't have to worry about trying to transfer your listeners to a different podcast app. Everything is in one place on your own website, which makes it super easy for you to give options to these listeners in case they need to change apps. Until the next time, happy podcasting.